what are some of the things that you're now putting in place and wanting to get put in place that can, um, can, can be a positive correction? Well, I, I would say one of the things you have to step back and, and think about is um, we want justice for all, right? We, put, we say the pledge, justice for all. And one of the things that kind of got lost in the shuffle, I think, are the victims. And um, to bring, to, to have them be part of that conversation, even as you're working on reform. Um, so one of the things that we uh, included in our legislation this year was um, truth and sentencing. So the victim kind of understands and will, will under, know um, the, the, the perpetrator, what, what the sentence really is, because sometimes it's, it's uh, the legalese, it's Greek to them, and, and they don't understand how quickly they can be out. Another thing, I, um, a, a lesson learned is, I think every state, you really ought to know your starting point. In fact, Governor, when you put out um, that to, to the, cha the changes, I think it was your first screen where you have the bullet points, and that uh, um, some of the things went to the, the minimums, the mi mandatory minimums. Our mandatory minim mini minimums were already low, so we were, we were actually quite liberal and so we took something that, um, where you changed it so it would be 50% of the sentence. We were already there, and we changed it to a quarter of a sentence and, uh, for the violent things. And then the quarter sentences, we said, well, you're not even gonna, you're not even gonna spend any time in prison. We're gonna have you on probation. So we shifted everything down way too far, so we put, put those back up. And um, one of the things, too, you have to, the, uh, to bring the public along with you, and like you said, it's got to be incremental, and some it's the sequencing is very important. But understanding the public uh, wants to, for, for a well-functioning society, there there needs to be a sense of ju justice, and people need to know that there's um, that there's a difference between right and wrong, and that's going to be carried out. And I think what happened is our our the the Alaskans felt like um, justice wasn't being served. And so paying attention to uh, the victims, I think, is very important in, in better communication with them through, through the process. Another thing, when I look back, well, Pew had done a chart, um, and you can see it on this, but I haven't seen it updated, but it had all the different things, I don't know how many things you have on the list that you could do for reform. And, and then it had the different states across the stocks across the top, and if you looked, Alaska did just, it did just like everything, check mark, check mark, check mark, all the way down the list. We did four or five times what other states did, and a good analogy might be is you're hungry, you go into a restaurant, you look at the menu, instead of picking one thing, you get like everything on the menu, and you try to eat it all, and then you're sick. And that's kind of what happened in, in Alaska. We, we were trying, doing too many things. So understanding your standing, your starting point, and um, picking, um, the, the things that make sense, but don't pick everything, and um, remembering um, the victims. And then another thing is don't be afraid to have law enforcement and prosecutors be part of the conversation. In our state, I, they were actually kind of held back, to be perfectly honest, um, because some of the law enforcement had a lot of concerns, and they were being told, um, you know, Stay, stay out of the Capitol, don't talk to, you know, they were being instructed not to talk they to them. Um, well, we, we have, at, at that time, we have, most of our state is a state trooper system. So it was by um, the uh, administration, basically, because the administration was wanting to pass this. And I, and I think now, um, knowing they, they would have wanted more interaction. So don't be fearful having prosecutors and law enforcement being involved. Make sure you do things in, in the right order. For instance, the sentence changes that we made, that should have been probably, that should have been the last thing. You should have the pretrial enforcement division set up. We should have had the substance abuse and things set up. But I, I do want to say as I, I wrap up, because I, I could just talk the whole time just, just on what we've learned, is as we made, um, we passed the bill in a bipartisan effort. We also repealed it in a bipartisan effort. Um, I think it was 20 to zero in, in, in the Senate. And But there was such a commitment, and I, I think it's actually why I was the judiciary chair, because the prior judiciary chair had, had led the, the bill, but he saw 
that I, my goal was to help offenders get on a pathway to turn themselves around. And one of the interesting things was there were some faith-based programs in the prison system, and I had some of the chaplains and those working in that that were actually concerned with when we did, the, we shortened sentences so, so short for those that were in um, that it wasn't long enough for them actually to help people turn their lives around. That, you know, you need minimum, like a year is a little on the short end, two years really. There was one called um, TLC, Transformative Living Communities, just, I, I, I think their recidivism is only like 10 or 15%, a really great program, a really great program. And um, and when we shortened the sentences, they didn't have them, they didn't, the, the they didn't have them long enough. So. I think there are things like that that, that we've learned. So what we're, our, our plan too is we bipartisanly came and repealed it. Bipartisanly, we are going to be working on changing the culture and the atmosphere within the system, within the prison system, so that when someone, it, that to, I, I think I use this phrase, chatting with someone, but our prisons had become incubators for hardening criminals. So somebody that was gentle natured that did something stupid under the influence of a substance, that they'd be in and out of the system, they would actually become hardened, um, violent offenders. That's wrong. So trying to change the culture so that they're being trained to work, so that they have a chance for counseling, mental health, um, substance abuse treatment, that, it, it, that it, they're not state employee run programs, but we're bringing those successful community organizations that have a passion and expertise that they come into the prison and they, they um, work with the inmates. So when he or she gets out, now they have relationships on the outside. They have a support people that they care about and they continue to work with them. So they're not going back, you know, to the bad influence of people that they hung out with before. So. Well, listen, I, I can't tell much I appreciate the fact that you still have, you still have that passion for reform. You saw that passion to make sure that people aren't coming, people are coming out better and not better. Uh, and you're adjusting to figure out how to, to make that happen the right way. And I think that that persistence, that, that diligence, like, hey, listen, some stuff's gonna work, some's not gonna work. Very few states are gonna start off as liberal as yours and then go more liberal. Like, you guys are already the far end, you're just gonna wait too far. Most states are way over here. Um, and, uh, but the fact that, uh, you, you came together to try to try something, you quickly came together to fix it, and you're still passionate about it, I think um, is very hopeful for those of us who kind of were biting our fingernails about what's happening in Alaska to hear you here say, look, we, we want to do it, we just want to do it the right way. So I think give a round of applause to Alaska. For still doing it. Um, yeah, I, I want to just get two more, more